Hello and welcome. Just like we did in the video showing the comparison of the latest Eden version for PC with the update, this time it's the Android version. How much has the emulator evolved on phones? I can already say that some games had insane performance gains, but other issues, as expected, still remain. If you want to know the full change log, I recommend watching the video I made for Windows earlier this week, where I detailed the main improvements and fixes the emulator received during these three months without public releases. Keep in mind this was a preliminary video. Only a few games were tested just to see if there were significant improvements. If you like it, I can make a more complete compatibility list testing various games. Not all games were compared between the two versions, in some cases. I'll only show how they behave in the newer version at the time of recording, that is RC2. The entire recording was done using an external capture card, so there's no performance loss caused by recording software. What you'll see is basically the experience of having my device in your hands. Speaking of the device, I used the ROG Phone 6 with 8GB of RAM, and the games were loaded from a USB drive with 500MB per second red speed. Since my recording setup requires the phone to be plugged into a charger to work, it wasn't possible to monitor battery consumption. Talking about changes in the emulator interface, we now have a carousel-like mode where you can slide the game sideways until you pick the one you want to play. I thought this addition was amazing, it makes the entire collection very well organized and intuitive. Another important addition is related to drivers. If you're using a Snapdragon device, by clicking Get New Drivers, the emulator automatically detects your SoC and recommends the best driver for your device. In my case, Adreno 730, and Eden recommended using the Mr. Purple T21 drivers. This is a really cool addition for those who always waste time searching online for custom drivers. Also, the overlay gained new info like battery consumption, which is always welcome. In the Eden Veil tab, we have CPU ticks. As I mentioned in the Windows video, this brings a decent performance boost. But with all these options, you might be wondering, how do I know which options to use to set up my favorite game in the ideal way? Eden will support Emuready, which is basically a database with devices and the best configurations. If you've used our PCS3, you know the emulator has a database indicating the best settings. Emuready goes beyond that by delivering the best settings directly from people using the exact same device as you. Now we'll also have options to edit your profile right from the home menu. No more using a profile called Eden without any cool image. Without further ado, let's get to the tests. The first game tested was Dragon Ball FighterZ, which has always had a serious RAM leak issue. Even though this leak can be fixed with cheats that disable some effects, playing the game as intended is still a challenge for Yuzu Forks, and Eden didn't fix this issue this time either. Despite seeing various specific builds trying to solve it, random crashes keep happening if you don't use the cheat. Coming straight from the future to tell you, at the moment I reviewed this script, this issue has already been fixed. There's a build for testers, called 164, where many people have already tested and the memory leak was finally resolved. I even checked myself, I played 3 matches, with all DLCs installed, no cheats or optimizations, and the game didn't crash anymore. For those waiting to play, just wait for RC3. From the Pokemon series, I still can't run Pokemon Scarlet, as the game crashes right at the start of gameplay. I've seen devices even older than mine running it, but on mine it only works with a very old driver. Pokemon Sword already has perfect gameplay, as if you were holding a Switch. Previous versions already had decent performance, but it seems there's been some gain now. Shadow Generation still has performance issues. I didn't see any performance gains in this version. I tried changing the CPU tick, enabling EDS3, but nothing solved it. Part of this is because my device isn't strong enough to run this game, and it could also be that the emulator needs improvements to run it properly. For now, let's wait for news on this title. Zelda Breath of the Wild was also tested. Overall, this game has been playable on Android for quite some time, many people have finished it from start to finish without major issues. Performance on my device was always close to 30 FPS, hardly ever above that. Now, at certain moments, performance reaches about 34 FPS, but due to emulation fluctuations, there are still areas where FPS drops below 30. In general, I noticed a slight performance gain, but graphical issues like water are only fixed with high-precision emulation, which comes at a considerable FPS cost. However, the purpose of this video was to compare games between the old and new versions, so let's start the tests. But before that, leave your like to help spread the video, and if this is your first time here, 
consider subscribing to the channel to keep up with updates. If you want to buy original games while saving a lot, check out Instant Gaming, the digital store that sells games for various platforms, such as PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch. Get games of all genres with discounts of up to 95%. You'll also find a variety of gift cards and credits for other services. You can pay for your order through your credit card on a website with a 4.7 rating on Trustpilot. You're buying games directly from Instant Gaming, not from other retailers. If you encounter any issues, Instant Gaming offers 24-7 support. What are you waiting for to save? Links in the description. Starting with Bayonetta 3, which is a great benchmark game, mainly because of its high frame rate and the frame drops it suffers whenever something intense happens on screen. Overall, the frame rate is higher in the new version, although since there isn't an app showing average FPS, apparently RC2 delivers better performance most of the time. One thing I noticed in the Windows version of Eden, which seems to reflect here, is that shaders appear to compile a little slower. For anyone planning to play this game with 8GB of RAM, at least for now, it will be a tough task since the emulator tends to crash after some time. About that crash, it took 6 minutes for version 0.0.2 .0 to crash, while RC2 lasted over 10 minutes. And in RC2, the route was more demanding, facing one of the most hardware-intensive parts of the game. My nicest surprise in this update was Red Dead Redemption, which is playable for the first time on an Android device. There are still bugs where characters and objects flicker in the city, but it happens more rarely, disrupting gameplay much less. Outside the city, performance went from an average of about 25 FPS to practically over 40 FPS in the new version. Now, even users with just Android devices can enjoy this masterpiece that is Red Dead Redemption. In Super Mario Odyssey, although FPS was already good before, it seems we now have smoother gameplay, with more moments of high frames and fewer sudden performance drops. So, if you ran the game before and had issues with these drops, you'll now have a smoother experience. I just couldn't tell if shaders, again, are a bit slower in the new version. In Xenoblade Chronicles 3, I saw a performance regression. Let's talk about that regression. Performance dropped significantly. In moments where we used to have around 30 FPS, it now drops to about 20. However, in RC2, all vertex explosions were fixed, which greatly improved the game's visuals. I've already informed the dev team about this issue, and let's hope they fix the performance in the next release. To finish, we won't have Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom again, simply because, like Pokemon Scarlet, this game always causes problems on my device regardless of configuration or fork used. I've talked to the devs, who can run the game even on devices weaker than mine, but on mine it crashes in the early moments of gameplay. So I recommend testing it on your device, because you can't really trust my tests on this game. The ROG phone just hates it. And that was the video guys. Next week we'll have the comparison you've been asking for, Eden vs Sadachi. I haven't been able to do it yet, because tests with two emulators, besides requiring a lot of disk space, also take quite a bit of time to prepare. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.